Welcome everybody to Canadian music in the 80s, 90s and more. A, it's been a while since I've done a Zoom call interview, but it's great to have my good buddy Greg Bond, or as you know, I'm bon tripping with Bonzi host, Bonzi here. Thanks for coming on. Hey, pal. Yeah, good man, it's a pleasure to be back on the show and chat music with you and just catch up. Yeah, so you've had a lot going on yourself personally, like outside of music and stuff like that. You've been uh, dipping your feet in the acting business, I see. I have. Yeah, it's been, gosh, I think we're pushing a year and a half now. Um, and I just landed my first agent uh, for voice acting and acting. So I'm really excited about that because I think that's really going to help move my career forward now. And, uh, you know, a lot of background stuff and a lot of small roles. And I'm hoping with uh, with this move forward, um, you know, bigger and better things to come for sure. So I'm pretty excited. Is it something you've always wanted to do or is it just... Uh... Yeah, always. But, you know, life sort of came at me pretty early. And, uh, you know, I didn't expect to get as married as young as I did, but I did. And and, and no regrets. We got married young, had uh, kids young. And, um, and, 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 you know, it sort of put my life and acting and stuff on the back burner. And, and now that I'm sort of at a, at a point in my life that my kids are growing up, um, I'm able to get back into sort of the things that I always wanted to do. And another thing I just did for the first time and always wanted to do was stand up comedy. Oh, and wow. I just did my uh, show and it was ended up being the feature and did seven minutes uh, in front of about 40 people at a, at a bar uh, last Monday night. So that was pretty exciting as well. And how did that go? Was it something you said you'd never done it before? So was it something that never was in before? Uh, I was scared leading up to it, but yeah, I kept waiting for this big nerves to come and stuff because I've got to before doing my own show when I may be interviewing somebody big or you know, if I'm doing some acting stuff and I got lines and you know, you get pretty nervous, but it, it just sort of never came and I was very well prepared for one. And, um, and two, you know, I put the phone away, I put the notes away and I just did it and owned it and, and I couldn't have asked for it to go any better for a first time. That's for sure. Are you going to try it again? I'm definitely hooked now. Um, I opened up and found something inside of me that I sort of, I would always make notes and, and, uh, say one day I'm going to be a comedian. I'm going to go back on these notes. And, uh, and, and I finally did that. And now that I did it and sort of taught myself, yeah. um, and how, so minor coaching, I definitely, I haven't taken any classes, but I had some advice, if you will, from yeah. some people that have done it in the past. And I took that to heart and, um, and just ran with it. And, and it's definitely something that I will be doing, uh, hopefully on a regular basis moving forward now. And that probably will help your acting chops quite a bit. It will. It goes hand in hand and it looks really good to an agent and to a casting director and directors who... Yeah. That this guy is a step above and beyond even an actor. He has the balls, if you will, to get up on stage and simply talk into a microphone and try and own and command the room and make people laugh. And it is, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. <laughs> and it makes you really learn how to think on your feet, I would think. Definitely. I mean, I've only done it once and I haven't been heckled yet, but you know, if you keep doing it, it's going to happen. And, and I'm going to bomb if I keep doing it, that's going to happen. And I'm actually looking forward to bombing because it's part of the industry. And I, I'm, a, I'm yeah. a massive comedic fan. I listen to all the greats, new and old yeah. and, and in between. And they've all, I've, I've heard stories from all of them, how they bomb and they just laugh it off and they're like, no, you know, what are you going to do? I can't be perfect every single night. So I don't know. I'm not looking forward to happen soon or, uh, or be super bad or anything, but I am looking forward to continuing this and, and, and experiencing the ups and downs and the heckles and the cheers and the laughs and bombing. <laughs> so Well, every, every comedian... Uh, Every comedian I've ever seen an interview with said they bombed at one point or several times. And it's how they've learned they've learned from it. It's inevitable to happen. And listen, I've done tonight is my 300th show of my trip with Fonzie podcast that you mentioned. Thank you very much. And um, listen, I, out of three, 299 live shows previously, there's been some really good shows, some really good interviews. But there's been some really bad shows, too, looking back. And you just, you know, you get through it. I'm not, I can't always be on and, um, but you know, you just do them and you get through them and it is what it is and you move on to the next one. Right. For sure. Congratulations on 300, by the way, that's quite an accomplishment to, uh, 
you know, get that far with something you because you never know where you're going to go with something with you started. You know, I'm proof of that. Oh, um, thank you never, you very much. you never know how far you're going to go with something you try for the first time. So, um, no, and I never even when I first did it, it was there. So there's a whole background story to it. I'll tell it real quick. Is I had just moved home from Nicaragua after living there for two years, two plus years because of the pandemic. And I, my, my own home was rented out for a year. So when I came back, I had to go and quarantine in my parents' basement. And um, I went from running a bar for 12, 13 hours a day, packed day and night to coming home and not allowed to see anybody for 14 days. And day four, I was going crazy. Yeah. And I got pretty drunk, actually. I was a pretty good drinker back then. And, and I went live on Facebook with a character of just any stuffed toys or whatever I could find around. And um, it was 47 minutes of drunken nonsense with the hit playing in the background and me just doing crazy voices. And it, it got a lot of attention. And of course I like that. And, um, and so it just continued. And then it morphed into me doing a proper podcast, if you will. And then right. started to interview different people i think my first ever one was jeremy taggart got it all started and mm -hmm. lesson for it and uh and now there's been a copious amount ever since it's a really great one that i had i'm pretty blessed and 300 is a pretty big deal so i'm looking forward to tonight brett uh, evans from the glorious sons lead singer is, is my guest tonight so it, it's going to be a special fun. well that's actually funny because uh, the beaches are coming here to pei in a couple of weeks and they wrote a song about brett because one of the girls was actually dating him so they certainly did you'll yeah. have to you'll have to ask him how he feels about having that song written about him <laughs> well you know he has been asked about it a lot already and yeah. uh i i have pre-recorded this interview we, we spoke on saturday and he sort of brought up um jojo from the beaches he didn't mention her name but he was talking about a recent relationship and what these we were talking about uh, certain lyrics in a song and right. i'd asked him what these lyrics meant and and he was very open and honest about it so um i could have continued the conversation on that way but like i said he's been asked about it a bunch yeah. and i wanted this interview to be really special and different and not ask those same questions he's been asked a lot so um and i did make reference of it i said brett i, I could continue down this road but i'll choose not to um, because I got other stuff that I want to get to, and um, and so we did. I took it a different way. And over your three hundred shows, your tripping with Bonzi shows, you've had quite a few uh, good interviews with some really solid musicians. Can you want to talk about some of your favorite ones? Yeah, I guess my favorite. It's no secret I love the Tragical Hip. I saw them forty nine times, and I got to interview Paul Langlois uh, mm -hmm. for about forty five, forty seven minutes, and that was that was really special to me. Um, to have Paul just sit there and, and, and Paul and I met before quite a few times. We've actually got right. to golf together. And so for him to just call me Bonzi, my nickname throughout the interview and, and it just felt and, and right. was so real and cool. And, uh, so that's a highlight for sure. Um, gosh, there's so many good ones and I'm going to forget them now. Uh, John Angus from the Trues was a lovely right. conversation. Uh, such a great musician, really chill guy. Uh, I really enjoyed that one. Uh, Jason Pierce, the drummer for Our Lady Peace. Mm -hmm. I mentioned Jeremy Taggart. He's on, he's he's been on a couple times. Um, another good one, Sammy Kahn. I'm a big drummer uh, fan, and it seems like I've always had a lot of drummers yeah. on the show. And Sammy Kahn from The Watchmen, another right. great band from the uh, uh, the early '90s and stuff. And and now they've been back together for quite a few years. Another great interview and just a, a cool chat. Um, so yeah, and there's there's a few off the top of my head. I know you interviewed uh, Connell and Crush, was it? I did, and that yeah. was actually a, a, a real favorite of mine, too. We had a very deep, wonderful conversation, and it was about life and death and, and, and drug you know, addictions. And uh, he was a wonderful chat, and very, very open, and yeah. it was real. And he, and he was, he was pretty candid about his best friend and bandmate dying and, uh, and, how, and how that affected him and yeah, I highly recommend people go check that out on my YouTube channel. For sure. Yeah, I'm going to put a description of that in the in the description of this video when I post this to YouTube. I'm going to put a bunch of just, uh, links and stuff like that in the description. So, and obviously a link to Trippin' with Bonzi because um, I, I think yours is worth watching. Anyone who watches mine would truly like yours for sure. Appreciate um, that. Yeah, no worries, man. Um, 
But uh, on a personal note, you've had a few life altering experiences in the past little while. Um, yeah, <laughs> I have. We can start. I guess the first one is it, it all started with. Um, so it leads back to the acting and I got this role. It was my first lead role in a small film. And it was, it was, I was going to have to have my shirt off in three scenes. And at the time I was, I was heavy. I was fat. I was 210 pounds at five foot eight. And, it, and I had this massive barrel and I was embarrassed. So it was like the second I found that out, I was like, okay, I got to change my lifestyle. I, I gotta, I gotta stop. But you know, any booze I put in my system is going to be like sugar-free and all that. So we went to vodka waters and I, I went on a carnivore diet. And um, that led into almost, I guess we're at nine and a half, almost 10 months now. And it's I'm 50 pounds lighter. And that led to subsequently led to me quitting drinking about two months after that happened um, of starting that. I, I had a mini stroke while I was in Nicaragua vacationing over New Year's, which was pretty serious, but luckily not too serious where it did any damage long term. So um, it was definitely an eye opener. And um Gave me sort of that push off the cliff I needed to really, really uh, put put two feet forward to to uh, quit drinking. And uh, it's been eight and a half months this past Monday. So yeah, that's, those are two pretty big deals, and it's made a huge impact in my in my life this this twenty 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 four. Congratulations, because that can't be easy to do. Um, you look fantastic. Um, you look like you're really healthy and feeling good. And um, yeah, sometimes. All Sometimes it takes and mentally like too. That. It's amazing how those two things really had an impact on my mental health. And for those who know, if you watch my show, and for those who don't know me, I, I struggle from PTSD, uh, severe PTSD, and uh, that led to severe depression and anxiety and all this stuff I never had before. And um, and so you know, 15 years later, after this tragic incident that I saw, um, I saw a kid get hit and killed by the train uh, by a train outside of the Kita Bala, yeah, this uh, wonderful music spot up in Bala. Um, and so, yeah, I, I really learned to and come to grips with it in the past couple of years, and especially this last year with with quitting drinking and and being in the gym a lot and running a lot and just being healthy. It really does have an impact on your mental health, um, and and I'm living proof of that for sure because you know I was suffered pretty good for for too long without getting help, and now I um, I feel great and mentally and physically. Yeah, it's got to be hard, especially when friends around you drink and stuff like that, to to not do that. Like, I mean, I personally don't drink and I have no problem with that myself, but I mean, it, it can't be easy for everybody. No, I mean, it's, it's it was basically involved in everything I did in my entire life. All my friends, you know, past girlfriends and, you know, uh, you know, going to concerts and I never did sober. I got a huge golfer. I never did that without drinking. And so everything yeah. that I did in my life revolved or included drinking and um so it was hard at first but instead of hiding and, and running away from all of it uh, like the original plan was i threw myself to the wolves and i continued to hang out with my friends at the bars uh, high school friends we do every thursday night still and we all stay together and, and it's something i didn't give up um it was hard really hard at first but it's something that i just mentally um conquered and, and you just keep doing it and the more i did it and golfed and went to concerts and didn't drink and i just found other ways to entertain myself i still smoke weed and and i'm, I'm a huge advocate of taking uh, mushrooms i think psilocybin is a wonderful thing to help people heal help people like me might not be for everybody but it has definitely been for me um and it has helped change my life over the past couple of years yeah great um it's awesome um Let's let's get into what I like talking about, and I know you do too. Let's get into music. Um, I know you're a big Tragically Hip fan. Um, I'm sure you're aware of the documentary that's going to be premiering at TIFF and yeah. on streaming services later. Um, I've seen some previews. It looks incredible. Is that high on your list of things to, to see? It is. Um, I don't know if I'm going to rush out and see it at the theater this time, though, because... Yeah, I, I I take it's very um, hard for me to watch. Yeah, uh, losing Gord for me was huge, um, and and I've had a hard time watching these things back. And every time I do, it's extremely emotional. And uh, you know, even thinking about it right now, I can feel getting choked up. And and yeah, so you know, I think I'm going to watch it in private. I I've seen yeah. I've seen the, pre the preview for it. Uh, the trailer looks absolutely fantastic. Um, 
I think Gordon's brother Patrick has done an amazing job with this, and I I am very looking forward to watching it. Uh, but it will be with a heavy heart, and I know that it's going to be extremely emotional as well. So it's it's bittersweet. Um, I don't think there's a person out there that was a, was a half a fan of the tragically hip, or even if a half a fan of Gord, um, right. that doesn't miss them and it do, and doesn't affect um, them in some way anymore. For sure. I mean, yeah, the fact that it's done by his brother, it really makes it feel like it's being it's being done right. You know, real and authentic as it will get. You know, I really do because Patrick and uh, Gordon had a pretty special relationship, and uh, Patrick ain't gonna do it wrong. So it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty special, but it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be extremely emotional, and not just for me. I think for a lot of people out there, because they were that the tragically hip was Canada throughout the nineties and two thousands, and until. And until Gord's passing uh, a few years ago. And a pretty, Gordon. you know, you got to think about how rare the hip is. Like, I mean, they're not the only ones, but it's a, a band that had the same guys through the whole history yeah. of the band. There was no yeah. lineup changes. There was no, you know, every album they did was the five of them working on it. Um, I mean, I guess you could say U2's in there. They've had the same four guys. Rush for so many years were just the same three guys. Um, Green Day. It, Green Day. It's a it's a pretty rare thing for a, the members of the band to not change for the whole. And yeah. you're you're talking thirty years at least of the tragically hip, forty years of Rush and U two going on over forty years. Uh, might even be fifty. I don't know how old am I. Uh, <laughs> but you know, it's pretty rare that a band can do what they did for so long with the same five guys. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, it was pretty special, and and I don't think there will ever. And I mean, there's so many great bands. There has been from the past, there is now, and there will be in the future. But I don't think there will be a band in Canada that will ever have the impact that the Tragically Hip did on an entire nation, love or hate them. And there wasn't too many people that hated them, but there definitely was. Um, and and even I think even if you hated them, I think you still might have watched a bit of that show that night and might have had a tear in your eye because you knew it was the last one in Kingston. Uh, we all did without anybody yeah. wanting to say it out loud because we were scared to. We all knew um, it was no secret that it was goodbye and it was goodbye to, to Canada and the world. So it was one of those true events that you could say you watched, you know, um, like Live Aid. You know, yeah. every everyone was watching it across this country. You know, sure. it's it was truly an experience that you don't see too often anymore, especially with the technology we have these days. Like everybody was watching that on television that night. Right. You know, you, know, you don't see too many events like that anymore because um, yeah. everything's so easy at your fingertips with your with your phone, smartphones and stuff like that nowadays. So, yeah, sure. it was a pretty rare thing to see. I don't know if we'll ever see that again. But uh, you got some bands that you're keeping an eye on. Yeah, I've been I've had a I've been pretty lucky to get to uh, so, so just with my, my podcasts and stuff. I've interviewed some really cool indie bands over. Uh, that's what it's sort of the my show has morphed into a little bit. Um, and, and off the top of my head, Feral Makes is is probably yeah. first and foremost. They won Rock Search this summer on 97.7 Hits Hits FM, which is mm -hmm. a really famous uh, Ontario, Southern Ontario Rock Search yep. contest that's been out for a long-ass time. The Glorious Sons won it in 2013. Uh, the Trues won it before that, mm -hmm. and some some other really good bands as well. So um, I got to interview the Pharaoh Minx uh, over a year ago, and then I went and uh, saw a few shows, and we did morphed into Friends. And uh, we are great pals now, and I'm... Uh, been lucky to see a whole whack of shows and hear a whole lot of new music that they've got coming out real soon um so that's a band to look out for austin levi is another great band that okay. uh sort of under the moniker of, and sort of the feral makes now they've been signed um uh, by 745 music which is jay emmons uh brett's older brother from the glorious sons um mm -hmm. music company that he started with his business partner um Pierstead of the glorious sons as well and um uh, so yeah, um, those are two off the top of my head that I am really digging and I think are wonderful. Another one, a small town strip club. Those guys are going places as well. I think they've got a great future ahead of them. And uh, Luscious out of Kingston is another band to, okay. to look out. Female singer, uh, great band behind her. And um, 
and yeah, uh, they're they're uh, out of Kingston. You can't, there's so many great bands coming out of there; it's unbelievable. So those are four bands to really look out. Five bands to really look out for uh, out of the Southern Ontario area for sure. Yeah, always looking to see you know to cover some new bands and stuff like that. Even though I am 80s and 90s, but the more part allows me to do whatever yeah. I want. So yeah, sure. and yeah, I love I love. I mean, there's there's such a vibrant music scene in a well all across the country probably if you really pay attention i mean yeah. the, Mar the maritimes as you know obviously has a rich musical history ontario does obviously like i mean um i did a i've been studying recording studios lately famous oh. ones um i want to do like a little i want to see if i can put something together because uh i saw a little documentary about little mountain sound in vancouver and okay. uh and the history of that studio over the years like i mean every famous band out of the west coast is recorded there but in the 80s it was a hotbed for bands like bon jovi and motley Crue and metallica and the cult and bob, bob rock became the big producer that he was you know leaving uh the payolas from those days and being probably one of the biggest producers you ever i mean they produced the tragically hip you know and yeah. he obviously developed a relationship with Gord Downey that they recorded an album together. Uh, Metalworks in Toronto uh, or in Mississauga, where I grew up, is a you know owned by the guys from Triumph. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Le Studio in Quebec. Mm -hmm. um, Rush recorded seven of their albums there. The Police recorded there. Um, every famous Canadian band is recorded in that little studio that was in the woods. Um, and I'm sure I think Hamilton has some pretty famous recording studios out there as well. Um, Grant Avenue, I guess, was a pretty big name back then. A lot of people recorded there. Have you come across any of these being uh, like haunted or have any sort of uh, stories like that of the paranormal or anything on your research? I haven't, but that would be kind of interesting. Um, it would be, yeah, for sure. I know Metalworks is still in existence as a recording studio. I don't know about Little Mountain Sound. The building's still there. Um, yeah. but, um, more in Heights, the studio, I think it burned down a few years ago, but, um, that, that was one I really, I actually got to see it from the outside a few years oh, really? back, back, but it, it wasn't open or anything at the time, but it's still pretty awesome to, I don't know if you've ever seen that rush video for Tom Sawyer where the winter backgrounds out the window, oh, yeah. that's more in Heights. I stood outside that window. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, April Wine did some videos there too and recorded a lot there. So I, I think it's kind of cool to see Canada's history with, you know, famous recording studios and stuff like that. Um, For sure. Yeah. Um, no, it's always cool to talk music with you and I'm glad to get, you know, an update with you and do, uh, oh, it's just, it's great to chat with you again, buddy. And um, um, I look forward to watching your show every Wednesday night and, you know. Thank you so much, man. Every once in a while, I like to leave a comment there just to let you know I am still watching. <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate all the support, and it's always a pleasure coming on. Uh, it's been a minute. I, I remember, I think maybe it was the last one I was live from Nicaragua, or I, yep. we recorded. I was in Nicaragua outside, and uh, so unfortunately, not, not so uh, lush background anymore or anything, just a crappy old green screen, but uh, yeah. <laughs> It was definitely yeah, yeah. a warmer climate than I was in. <laughs> That's true. But, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm looking forward to uh, to what the future is going to bring and some, some many more great uh, artists on my show as well. And and hopefully down the road, uh, get on your show. Yeah. And the best of luck with your acting and stuff like that. I hope, you know, having an agent helps you get as far as you want to get. And uh, I'm dying to see some more stand up comedy. I think that would be a great thing to see you do you yeah. definitely you definitely have the personality for it um and like you said it really will help your acting i think in the long i run. think so too yeah, definitely definitely so it, it's uh it's something that i'm really looking forward to to putting some more time and effort into on my downtime sure. especially now that winter's coming a half unfortunately because i i'm a huge golfer but uh now that four or five hours on the golf course, I can come home and we'll put it to writing and working on my step comedy craft and see where that goes. Well, you're missing out on some serious good golf courses if you don't come to PEI some summer. I'll get, I'll get there one summer. I'll get there. Yeah. Okay. Summer was busy for me, but uh, I got to start. My 
time management uh, better. Maybe we'll uh, we'll sneak out there for uh, for a weekend or a week uh, next summer, play some golf. Maybe do an in person interview. That'd be great. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, can't thank you enough for joining me. Uh, good luck with everything. Thanks for joining me, and uh, we'll see you out there on Cyberland again. I you hope. bet. My pleasure, and thanks again for having me, Carl. No worries, bud.